I want you to picture your favorite American hero. I want you to put into your mind for a minute the person that you most admire in American history. Who is the greatest American who ever lived? I want you to picture George Washington or Ronald Reagan or Patton or Neil Armstrong or any of the people, any of the people that you consider to be an American hero. I want you to get them in your mind. Now I want you to imagine whether or not you could see that person standing in a line in the open at Lexington facing an oncoming army of trained professional British soldiers. Can you see that person standing in that line with their rifles as a Minuteman ready to stand and fight for their country? Because I can. Every American that I admire, I can put right there on Lexington and Concord in the open with their rifles declaring their freedom and their independence. I can picture all of my heroes out there, but can you picture Washington or Reagan or Patton or, or Armstrong or Martin Luther King or whoever you want to pick? Can you picture anybody like that? Any of the founding fathers, can you picture any of them getting roaring drunk, painting themselves red, walking onto somebody else's private property, taking the tea that they paid their money for, smashing it into bits and dumping it into the bay? Can you imagine George Washington in the, in the Boston Tea Party? Can you imagine Ronald Reagan in the Boston Tea Party, drunk as, as, as lords and screaming and made up like Indians and just wrecking things? Can you imagine anybody that you admire doing that? Because I can't, I cannot imagine that. And the reason that I can imagine my heroes standing in line in the open declared as independent people against an oncoming army versus being people who are dressed up in disguise, roaring drunk, completely out of control, and smashing things is because one of those things is an army and the other is a mob. And if you don't understand the difference between these two things, then, then we are in more trouble than I ever imagined. So if one of them is an army and the other one is a mob, what is the difference between the two? If you are talking about winning a war a cultural war, if you're talking about winning a war and you need an army to do that, and you end up with a mob, what's the difference between an army and a mob? And the answer, if you have any idea of anything, is it is discipline. It's discipline. That's the difference between a mob and an army. Yesterday, the American people and the people who love this country, American patriots, walked into the most perfectly laid political ambush that I have ever seen in my life. I have seen them constructing this ambush for the last four years. I have been out there on the ridge with my binoculars, watching them set up the defenses, watching them set up the wires, the minefields, bringing in the artillery, zeroing in everything, in placing the machine gun nests. I've seen them preparing for what happened yesterday for four years, and then sure enough, we walk directly right into it. Now, yes, there's no question that Antifa had people there p posing as Trump supporters. And yes, there's no question that there were that there were agitators, yes, and there's no question about any of that, but there's also no question about the fact that this wasn't all Antifa. There's no question about the fact that that woman who had served honorably in the United States military for, for four terms for 16 years, who was shot dead by, by uh, police forces who felt that they were in fear of their lives. That person wasn't a member of Antifa. So you can say that there was provocation there and you'd be right about that. But to say that this whole thing was created by Antifa is to, is to, is to ignore, is to ignore the reason that yesterday was a catastrophe, a catastrophe. Now people say that violence doesn't settle anything. I disagree. I have studied the history of warfare and sometimes violence is the only thing that settles things, but we are not in that kind of a conflict and I don't know how many times I have to say it or what it is going to take for me to make this clear. The weapons that we have as Americans, our AR-15s and all of our ammunition and all of it, those are not the weapons in this war. Those are not our weapons. Those are our shields. Those are there to prevent the government from taking political opponents out of their homes. That's what they're there for. They are a shield. They're not a weapon. They're a shield. 
And when you give the government cause to do the kind of things that they're itching to do, to give these left-wing progressives, when you walk into their kill box and you go right into their moral and narrative ambush and give them the, the, the moral ammunition to do what they want to do, then there is no way to spin that as a victory. Now, some people have said, well, you know, JC, you know, are you saying, well, we're just not time to fight? No, it's definitely time to fight. It's definitely time to fight. But if you think that mob violence, and if you think that this undisciplined expression of passion and outrage is going to win this conflict, you are wrong. It is going to lose this conflict. This is something that we simply have to understand. We have to understand. I get the provocation. I understand that. I understand the rage. I understand the hypocrisy. I understand it. I remember when, when um, Scott Walker was doing what he was doing in Wisconsin and mobs took over the Wisconsin legislature for day after day after day, took over the whole building and started chanting, this is what democracy looks like. No, it's not. No, it's not. It is not. I want this country back. I want America's I want America's soul back. So I completely condemn what happened yesterday, not because it's not time to fight, but because it is not time to fight like a mob. There, listen, an American army, an American army is different from a mob because an American army, when an American army goes to war, it goes to war on a foundation of justice, a foundation of righteous anger, a foundation of moral certainty that you are on the side of the angels, and it does it with discipline. American armies do not shoot hostages and they don't hang children in order to get information. They are not a bunch of people climbing over barricades and smashing windows. An American army has discipline and they preserve the moral integrity necessary to win because they have discipline, because they don't do the kind of things that they have been begging us to do. Now, if you hear this and you think, oh, Bill, you just, what are you saying? You're saying it's just time to keep talking, you've given up, you, you have missed the entire point. 100% missed the entire point. Th there is nothing that could have happened yesterday that could have been better for the enemies of freedom. That was absolutely 100% what they were looking for, what they set us up to do. They perfectly executed that ambush, perfectly executed that ambush. And if we want to fight this war and win our country back, we would better stop acting the way they want us to. We would better have the discipline, the discipline, to understand that this country is worth fighting for, and if it's worth fighting for, it's worth winning. And if it's worth winning, that means you have to have the discipline to fight like an army and not just go out and become a mob, not become the kind of things that we're fighting against. This is, this is the entire issue. My friends, this, when we talk about fighting them, and I've talked about I've talked about how the Marines had to deal with the Japanese, but they had to deal with the Japanese warriors. The Marines never lined up entire batches of citizens of Japanese civilians and gunned them down in order to get people to surrender. It is not by any means necessary. It's not a question of fighting by any means necessary. It's a question of directing what is ideological violence against enemy combatants and not doing this kind of rampage of destruction that does nothing but it but but damage the cause of freedom listen what i saw yesterday here's how it looked to me i understand the outrage I, i'm not going to have to make that that course again but folks if we want this country back we got to understand something this is not about storming barricades and smashing windows. It is about storming ideologies and smashing ideas. It is a war against evil philosophy. And that philosophy is just waiting to be given the go-ahead, the moral go-ahead needed to take the physical action that they have been dying to take. This is not how you are going to win this. We walked into a kill box that had machine guns 
enemy machine guns, well in place troops, razor wire, landmines, claymores, they had artillery, they had mortars, they had machine guns. They were perfectly set up for this. They were waiting, they were praying for this, praying for it. And our love of our country and our, and our anger and our rage overcame us and we gave them exactly what they wanted. And that is not going to do it, my friends. That is not going to do it. That's not how you win, that's how you lose. Now, what I'm about to say is gonna be very difficult. It's difficult for me, it shouldn't be that difficult for you. I guarantee you this is gonna be harder for me to say than it will be for you to hear, but nevertheless, there it is. Two days after Mitt Romney lost in 2012, I said publicly that the next president of the United States is gonna be a Republican and he's gonna come from the pop culture. Because in 2012, I could see that what the news media was doing, what all of the information sources were doing, that the culture, what the culture was doing, the culture war, I could see that the only person who was gonna win in 2016 was somebody who understood that dynamic and who was ready to play by their own rules. And I was right about that. And now I'm going to tell you what's going to happen next time. And I'm right about this too. The next president of the United States is not going to be a public figure or a celebrity or come from the pop culture. The next president of the United States, the next genuinely duly elected president of the United States, the next real president of the United States, is going to be somebody who you have never heard of before. You have not heard of them now, you have no idea who it is, and I'll tell you something else, the next president of the United States of America doesn't know that they're gonna be the next president of the United States of America. They don't know it now, and they won't know it for a while yet, because the next president of the United States of America after this criminal regime is finished is going to be a person of unimpeachable moral character, honesty, decency, compassion, and they're going to be the kind of person who understands what it is we're fighting for, and they're gonna be the kind of person who can articulate it so that the hearts and minds of the American people are with them. I am not gonna get into recriminations now because this is the worst time to do that. People are already demoralized enough. But I will say this, the evidence for voter fraud in, in this last election has been overwhelming, and the port, and the and the actual deployment of the evidence has been handled so miserably, it's been so badly done that I stand here with my mouth open and wonder how such overwhelmingly compelling evidence could simply be just pissed away in so many, in so many incompetent fashions. But when that happened yesterday, all of the credibility that was in place with the mathematics, all of the credibility, all of the factual things that happened, were essentially undermined because we are fighting against people who understand the message. They control the megaphones. What should have happened somehow is that from the morning of November 4th, there should have been an ongoing, daily, calm, rational, explanation of each individual case of these irregularities, how they're physically impossible in terms of mathematics. There should have been a case made not to Congress, not to the Senate, not to the Electoral College, not to anybody. The goddamn case should have been made to the American people because that's the only thing that matters. It's the only thing that counts. The, the, the case should never have gone to court before it went to the American people. Are you surprised at what happened? Our enemies control all of the information. They control all of it. Anybody who is not actively looking for the truth knows what to think because the people out there control what to think, how they see, what they see, all of it. They got all of it. And we continue to think that somehow these institutions that are the problems in the first place are gonna save us from this? The, look, we have waited since the morning of the 4th of November, for somebody to release the Kraken. We've been told that Donald Trump wrote an executive orders about election fraud. Okay, that seemed good news to me. He wrote an executive order saying that there was evidence of it, we're looking for it forward. Great, why wasn't this done before the election? I don't know. But when the actual fraud occurred, that evidence, and that evidence increases every single day, 
That evidence should have been presented to the American people in a rational, calm, morally outraged, but disciplined fashion, and it should have been made clear to every single person in the country that this was not some cult of personality or any of the other things that they set us up for and then executed yesterday. It should have been absolutely 100% factually based and it should have been delivered eloquently and briefly and daily. And it didn't happen. So my friends, here's the situation. I saw the future before, I can see the future now. And I'm going to tell you, I told you this would be difficult and it's difficult because I have had my entire life, all of the misery in my life has been brought upon me by unchecked ego and arrogance and all of the things of my youth. My, in, I have lost half of my life more. I've lost two thirds of my time on earth, lost it, gone because of a diseased ego because of a diseased ego and because of, of all of the things that come with it. And so what I'm about to tell you is very difficult for me, but the time for restraint is over. I can see what is going to happen because I am the only person I know with one exception who really understands what kind of a fight we're in and therefore understands how to win this fight. And the only person in my entire life that I have ever met, ever, who understood what I understand, and I learned a great deal from this person, and that person was Andrew Breitbart. Andrew Breitbart was the only person I have ever met who, and he told me this to my face. He said to me, you're the only person who gets it, and I said to him, and so are you. He is the only person that I've ever met that understands as well as I do what is going on, how it's going on, how to stop it, and how to beat it. I don't want this job. This is not something I am doing for my own glory or aggrandizement. I am doing it because I have come to realize that only people who understand what is happening are going to get us out of this mess. So the answer to our problems is very simple. We have been looking upwards for somebody to save us. We've been looking for Donald Trump to save us, or maybe the Supreme Court will save us, or maybe Michael Pence will save us, or maybe the electors in, in Congress will save us. And we've been looking up and looking up and looking up and waiting for somebody to release the Kraken and come and save us. And this is how we got into the trouble in the first place. Listen to me now. We are the Kraken. We are the Kraken. It's us. It's not them. It's never been them. We lost the government of this country because we walked away from the daily mechanics of running it. We just walked away. When school started to turn to the left, we just walked away and let them have it. When Government started cheating with elections and we started seeing all of these illegal aliens and these, and these motor voter laws and, and ballot harvesting. We let it happen because we walked away. We walked away from it. We didn't want to deal with it. We didn't want to get our hands dirty in politics, which is as dirty as they can get. We walked away from it and we let it happen. We're the Kraken. It's not going to come from above. It's not going to come. There's nobody going to come and save us, folks. No one is going to come and ride to our rescue. It's not going to be Donald Trump. It's not going to be the Electoral College. It's not going to be the Supreme Court. It's not going to be anybody. Nobody's going to rescue us. We are going to save ourselves or we're going down. And if you don't understand this, then at least get out of the way. The next president of the United States of America is going to be an American citizen of unimpeachable character. I said Trump was going to win in 2016 because he's what was needed to win in 2016. What's needed to win now is somebody who understands this country, loves this country, and knows how to tell why. We have done nothing in this war of narratives but say, no, that's not true. We have never once have we ever, ever told the story of this country. I've never seen it happen on a large scale. I've never seen anybody, politician, pundit, anybody. I've never seen anybody say, it's not a question of your story is wrong. Our story is not only right, our story is better. It's a better story. Nobody knows how to do this. 
I know how to do it, and now I'm going to. So I am no longer at the point where I'm going to be asking for your help. I'm demanding it now. I need a thousand new members by the 20th of January, which I'm not going to call Inauguration Day because it isn't. And the reason that I need a thousand new members between now and then is because I'm going to need the money from those members to go and get the millions of dollars and then the tens of millions of dollars and then the hundreds of millions of dollars that it is going to take to put American citizens into political office and recover the country the way it needs to be recovered, which is legally from the bottom up. And that's exactly how it was built. This entire American Revolution was designed to get us away from depending on kings and lords and dukes and emperors and understand that our future is our own and we make it ourselves and the future in, of this country is going to be saved by us or it's not going to be saved at all. No one's coming to our rescue. No one. And if you don't like politics, I don't either. But the people that have taken over this republic never sleep. They never rest ever. They know that they can use democracy and the votes in order to make sure that freedom disappears forever. And they work at it 24 hours a day for the last 70, 80, 90, 100 years. They never, ever, ever sleep. They never stop. And so now we're faced with a very simple question. Did our institutions fail us? Yes, they did. Did our leaders fail us? They did. So you want your country? You want America? You want a future for this country? It's going to come down to whether or not you are willing to run for office or whether or not you're going to help somebody who you know who's worthy of running for office. Citizens are going to retake this country from the bottom up or it's gone. It's gone. And I'm not saying it's gone. I, I am so certain in my soul, I am 100% convinced that we are going to get this government back because this strategy is unstoppable. It is the strategy of an idea, of a philosophy, of a morality, of, of, a, of a future that is worth having. And no one is telling that story. And I'm telling that story and I need help to tell it more. So from now on, you're gonna see a number behind me. And that number is gonna represent the number of people that we need in order to get to another thousand members. And when that number gets to zero, then we can say, okay, looks like we're serious because I need people on the field. I need people on the field. The country needs players, not spectators. We need players. We need people who are ready to get down in the mud and get dirty. We need players. And if you're a spectator, that's fine. But these programs and all the rest of the stuff that we're going to need is made possible by players not by spectators and the people who have stepped up in the last couple of weeks and months have my eternal gratitude but it's not my gratitude you need you have the gratitude of the country this is an idea of wars and stories and battles and pop culture and i know how to fight it and i'm going to fight it and i need the assistance of the people who want to save this country i'm not doing this for myself i don't want the job i never wanted the job but I know how this fight is being conducted. I can see it. I'm not in the maze. I'm above the maze. I see all of it. I see the way into the trouble and I see the way out of the trouble. And I know what the answer is. So, are we going to be a mob or are we going to be an army? Are we going to have discipline? Are we going to have morality on our side? Are we going to have justice? Are we going to be, are we, are we going to be, are we going to be worth the victory? Are we going to be the kind of people that God and nature wants to prevail? Do we deserve to win? Do we? Do we deserve to win? I believe we do. And I believe that the provocations leveled against us became overwhelming. They became overwhelming yesterday. But we can't afford that. That is not an army. That's a mob. If you don't have the discipline to not walk into an ambush, then we have no use for you. I wish it weren't true, but it is. We are gonna win this war against the enemies of freedom because truth and righteousness, freedom, all of those things the pursuit of happiness are on our side. But if you think 
that this is a, a battle that's going to be won by stockpiles of ammunition and AR-15s, then I hate to be the person to tell you that you're just wrong. You're wrong. I know it's hard to understand, and I know it seems trivial, but it's not. Everything you believe in about this country, everything you love about America is the result of a story, of a story that you heard. It's about the idea of America in your mind. It's about the ideal. It's about the morality, the philosophy, all of it. And that's where the fight is, and that's where we're going to fight it.